There are two types of compounds at this level of chemistry. There are those that are called ionic compounds and there are those that are called covalent compounds. We need to learn about each of them, how they are made and how to name the ionic and the covalent compounds. So how are ionic compounds made? Ionic compounds are formed when a metal transfers an electron or electrons so electron or electrons to a non metal so you have a metal and you have at least a non metal when you're talking about ionic Covalent compounds, on the other hand, are formed when a non-metal or a semi-metal shears electrons with non metals so if you have a non metal sharing electrons with other non metal you have a covalent compound also, if you have a semi-metal sharing electrons with non-metal, you also have a covalent compound. Actually, the word covalent means sharing. Let us take a look at an example of how ionic compounds are formed. Take a look at these two atoms. Here we have lithium and fluorine. Lithium is element number three in the periodic table. Fluorine is element number nine in the periodic table. That is why you have the electrons arranged, as you see, in the Bohr's model of an atom. Do not forget that main group elements always want to be like the noble gases. So, this is the question. How can lithium be like a noble gas? it would have to lose the one electron in its outermost shell to be like a noble gas, which would be helium. Also, how can fluorine be like a noble gas? It would have to gain an electron so that the outermost shell will have eight electrons. So, lithium would then lose one electron and fluorine would gain that one electron. That is what we call transfer of electrons. And when that is done, this is what will happen. Lithium, having lost one electron, will now be like helium. But because it lost an electron, it will carry a charge of plus one. 
fluorine having gained an electron will now have a charge of minus one and it will have electronic arrangement that is similar to neon the compound formed between these two is lif and that compound is very stable because the lithium is positively charged and the fluorine is negatively charged the electrostatic attraction between positive and negative makes this compound very very stable because both of the two ions involved in the compound are very stable so whenever you have a metal interacting with a non-metal it is simply because the metal wants to lose electrons and the non-metal wants to gain electrons that is an example of how ionic compounds are formed let us now take a look at how covalent compounds are formed take a look at these two atoms each of them is fluorine each of them has seven electrons in its outermost shell how can they both be stable there is no metal around here both fluorine atoms are non-metals so the best thing they can do is to shear electrons so both of them will shear electrons and when they do that this is what will happen now take a look at the first fluorine atom take a look at the outermost shell the outermost shell now has eight electrons just like neon let us also take a look at the second fluorine atom the second fluorine atom also has eight electrons in its outermost shell which means both fluorine atoms are now like neon both of them are stable but if you look carefully you will see that both of them are sharing these two electrons so the result is fluorine molecule f2 so whenever you have two non-metals sharing electrons to form a compound a covalent bond will be formed between them it is especially very easy to predict the type of compound that will be formed when we are producing ionic compounds let me remind you of something you already should know in the periodic table group 1a elements will all carry a charge of plus one group 2a elements will all carry a charge of plus two group 3a elements will all carry a charge of plus three 4a elements can be plus or minus four 5a elements will all carry a charge of minus three 6a elements will all carry a charge of minus 2 while 7a elements will all carry a charge of minus 1 now with that known take a look at this question can we predict the type of compound that will be formed between magnesium and chlorine yes we can if you take a look at the periodic table magnesium is an element in group 2a 
which means it will have a charge of plus 2. Chlorine, on the other hand, is an element in group 7A, which means it will have a charge of minus 1. So this will have a charge of plus 2. This will have a charge of minus 1. What does that mean? It means whenever magnesium wants to react, it will react by giving two electrons away. On the other hand, when chlorine wants to react, it will react by gaining one electron. That is the meaning of the charges that we have on these two. So how can this relationship work? Magnesium wants to be stable by giving two electrons away. Chlorine wants to be stable by accepting only one electron. This is how it's going to work. You will need another chlorine atom so that the total number of electrons to be gained will now be two. And that is how magnesium and chlorine can form a compound, which would then be MgCl2. That would be the formula of the compound formed between magnesium and chlorine. Let us take a look at one other example. Can we predict the formula of a compound produced between aluminum and sulfur? Oh yes, we can. Let us take a look at the periodic table. Aluminum is an element in group 3A, it will have a charge of plus 3. Sulfur is an element in group 6A, it will have a charge of minus 2. So put the charges on them and interpret the relationship. Aluminum wants to be stable by giving 3 electrons away. Sulfur wants to be stable by only taking in two electrons. So how can this relationship work out? Remember the law of conservation of mass. Matter is neither created nor destroyed. The total number of electrons to be given away must be equal to the total number of electrons to be accepted. That is the meaning. So aluminum will need another atom which means that the total number of electrons to be given away is now 6. On the other hand, sulfur will need 2 more atoms, which means that the total number of electrons to be accepted will now be 6. So, the compound that will be formed between aluminum and sulfur will have a formula of Al2S3. It is, however, not very easy to predict the types of compounds you will form for covalent compounds. But we will learn about them as we go on.